Hi there, welcome to the Spirit of Wisdom and Revelation channel. Um, I just am impressed upon my heart to share with you two um, dreams and a vision that I've had. Um, and it's a warning that Father is giving to us. And that is why I titled this particular video, A Storm is Coming. So I just want to read what Father has shown me and what is on my heart. Um, and I pray that you will prayerfully consider what is being said here. So I was reminded of two dreams and a vision that I had a few years back. I believe Father is warning us of a storm that is about to come and has been doing so for quite a while. We hear of a lot of uh, prophets and warnings and watchmen that is talking about a storm is coming. We've seen waves on various fronts thus far, whether it's the med medical or the financial or religious or social arena. We've seen waves come our way that has basically confronted us in our different categories. You know, where do you stand on these things? How, how do you react to these things? Um, and causing us to look at the future. How, how are we to react and what are we to do about all these things that we see coming up on this earth? So from the very first time we have heard that a storm is coming via the lips of President Trump, um, you know, we've seen wave after wave of these storms coming. And the waves will be the same, you know, it's still the financial, it's still the social, it's still the religious arena um, and the social arena, but they will increase in size. But we thus far have been normalized to these things. Um, it's almost normal for us to hear about the different untimely deaths, young ages, of suicides, of uh, uh, the things that are happening in school. We've been so normalized um, to what is happening. And so we are basically being prepared for bigger things. So we can expect these bigger things to come. And this is what this warning is about. We are to brace ourselves for impact. Um, and not look lightly on these warnings, even though they seem like the same warnings coming over and over. We hear the same thing. Watch out for the mark of the beast. Watch out for persecution. Watch out for whatever it may be. We hear the same thing over and over and over. And we even get so used to it that we don't really take note of it. But we do need to take note as we see the day of the Lord approaching. You know, how the closer we get to uh, the great tribulation starting which evidently is very close so um, we can no less stop these waves what will happen upon this earth and what we can stop the sea right so however we are not to walk in fear father doesn't want us to walk in fear but we have a clear understanding of that which has, is expected of us when all these things happen we need to know what does he expect of us? We cannot control it, but we can prepare our hearts and not succumb to the spirit of fear that will engulf this earth like a thick, dark, ominous cloud with the promise of great storms coming. So I've been seeing the number 69 again, and previously it had a different meaning, but Father has brought it again upon my path, and I saw it over and over. And this reminded me of a dream that I had uh, I think I had this dream with, uh, it was just before President Biden came into office, I had this dream. So uh, it's a very short dream. So it's actually a vision. In this vision, I was in a crowd looking at a stage and everything was pitch black. And from out of the backdrop, a light started to shine through the thick black curtains. The next moment, a woman dressed in black with snow white hair walked out onto the stage ramp. It was then that I noticed that the stage was made on one side of a six lying on its side and the other side of the stage was in the shape of a, of a number nine also laying on its side. And that was the end of the vision. So this is the interpretation of this vision. And so Father is bringing this to my attention again to show and tell us that we need to take note of what is happening. So the number 69 is a very important number in the occult and specifically in Freemasonry. They are opposites, the six and the nine, one up, the other down. And the reason why my vision is only in black and white is because it, the colors themselves are opposites. 
The colors also represent the checkerboard floor on the Freemasonry uh, lodges and ultimately the world as, as a chessboard that is black and white, right? Though opposites, it's the same game, right? To see who will rule the world. Note in a chess game, the queen is the main focus. You can have the king, but the queen shall rule all. She calls the shots. This is who the woman represents in my vision. She represents the Queen of Heaven, a.k.a. Jezebel, who rides the beast, which is a system containing of pawns who does her bidding. The reason why this happens on a stage is the familiar saying of, or quote of William Shakespeare, all the world's stage. So, and the reason for the six of the number six of the stage in that uh, shape and the number nine laying on its side is to say that everything is falling into place according to what they have planned to a T. So we must understand that his father is saying to us, note that things will escalate, they are falling into a plan like dominoes. Okay, so moving on to another dream that forms part of this. In this dream, I was in one of the World Trade Centers when it was still standing, and this was years after the World Trade Center has already gone down. I was in a library, library looking at children's books. And the next moment, everybody within the building knew that these buildings are going down. And we rushed to the elevators to get out, but instead of me rushing immediately to the elevators, I grabbed as many books, children's books, as I could. And the next moment, I am in the sky. I'm looking down at the World Trade Centers, and I can see them crumbling down, just going down from the sky. I'm seeing this. And together, where they crumbled, they formed like a hole, a massive hole in the ground. And out of this hole came a massive, huge black mamba, or you can say a python, came up out of this hole right in, up to the sky face to face with me and I wasn't scared of it at all and that was the end of that dream that I had there. So the key to understand this dream is actually the children's books and books are within a book case within a library right and the word says that all our days are written in our books and this is a reference to our DNA that scientists have proven is literally like a book that you can read. In a way, you can look at the strands of our DNA as books in a bookcase forming a library. The reason why it was children's books in my dream is not only the focus being on children, but rather the focus is the coming generations. The two towers crumbling down with the black mamba or python rising from the ashes is that out of the two, the new comes out. They represent the walls of our DNA the Twin Towers, the walls of our DNA, that have been compromised with the V. Walls are there to protect us. It also represents the new world order and the rise of the beast system. The dragon in Revelation is called that wicked serpent. This is nothing new to those who have discernment, right? But in this conversation, it serves as a backdrop with the vision that I received of the 69, the stage was in the form of 69. The 69 points to 23 times 3, an extra chromosome added to our DNA, which is the rise of the Antichrist system. Just like we are living stones built up into Christ, into the royal, we are a royal priesthood, living stones built up in him. So those who will be part of the B system will be rolling stones built up in the B system. Right? That is what the rolling stones stand for. They rolled away from the chief cornerstone. They rejected him. Okay, so please note that all of this is calculated step by step and perfectly planned to the T by the enemy. Their plans are falling nicely into place. Okay, now just now, um, before I did this video, my daughter was watching a National Geographic um, documentary about this man catching snakes. And I asked her, what snake is this guy catching? And I knew what she was going to say. And she said, a black mamba, or you can say a bison. Okay, so now onto my last dream. And this is the 
the crux of this video that I'm making. I dreamt that I was at a party with one of my friends. And during this party, my friend came to me in a panic, showing me all the bumps on her arms. And we were standing at a counter when she grabbed me in great panic, begging me to help her. And all of a sudden, she disintegrated in front of me, um, like into a very old woman right before my eyes, almost like 95 years of age. And I carefully laid her down on the floor and I called for a doctor. And before a doctor could get to us, she sat up again as if nothing was wrong with her at all. She was perfectly fine. And I knew the doctor would not be able to help her. And just then, at that moment when the doctor came, she fell down again. And that was the end of my dream. So my first thought was, why this particular friend? You know, I could have chosen any other friend in my dream, but why this friend? And I looked up the meaning of her name and nothing significant stood out that could lend itself to this dream to help me out with the interpretation. And um, she's also not, a, uh, she also wouldn't take the V. Um, she's completely against it. So I couldn't understand what this dream was actually telling me. And um, it's at that scene, a point that it made sense to me when I realized that she in real life was a sister and or a nurse in the medical field okay so she is forming a function she's she's there to help she she therefore is a type and shadow of a worker or as a christian one who is there to help in the time of great devastation so the way she looks is an indication of the devastation that will take place she was devastated Okay, so I do not believe this dream is actually a reflection on her as a person, but rather on the workers who in identification with those suffering in the time to come in a great tribulation will be devastated by what they see. Aging was a sign of shock in this dream, right? And many people in great fear has gone uh, gray. Their hair would go white because of shock. So anxiety also causes the aging process to um, accelerate greatly. Okay. Nobody could help her. The fact that she sat up and was okay only to fall down again shows that fear will be a constant battle in the time to come. The words that came to my spirit is that she waxed old. And this holds significance for me because Father is speaking to me with regards to the next devotional that I will teaching that I will be doing, and that is about um, waxing strong in the spirit. And so I didn't see the connections between these two until I actually started uh, talking to Father about the interpretation of this dream. So it makes complete sense to me that he's going to speak to uh, uh, give a, help me with the teaching with regards to um, waxing strong in the spirit for the time to come. Um, And this also reminds me of the scripture, uh, I think it's Luke 21, where Yeshua asked his disciples to pray with him, right? And he found them asleep. And um, he says in his word, watch and pray that you may be accounted worthy to stand before the Son of Man. And then he talks that we are not to be uh, uh, overcome by the things of this world. We have not to be, uh, that you are not... Uh, 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 um, overwhelmed by what you see right and this is exactly what this um, dream is about so Yeshua then tells them the flesh is weak but the spirit is strong and this is exactly what this dream is talking about it's talking about the flesh she was full of boils right or not boils or marks or bumps on her on her arms and she waxed old so it was talking, it was, this dream was saying not only was there a manifestation with the flesh, right? But there was a manifestation with the spirit, that her spirit waxed old. She was weak in spirit as well. And she couldn't be, she wasn't able to deal with it. She was crying out for help because of the devastation. Let's read the scripture, what it says in Luke 21 for verse nine, from verse 19. Yeshua tells his disciples here with regards to the discourses that when they ask what will, what will it be like during the end times, where we are at now. Verse 19, 
He tells them, in your patience, that's endurance, that's the word patience. In your patience, possess your souls. Be in control. Don't lose control. When these things happen, don't lose control. Possess your souls. Verse 20, and when you shall see Jerusalem come past with armies, then know that the desolation thereof is nigh. Then let them which are in Judea flee to the mountains, and let them which are in the midst of it depart out. And let them that are in the countries enter there in two. For, there, for these be the days of vengeance, that all things which are written may be fulfilled. Remember, the days of vengeance. But woe unto them that are with child, and to them that give suck in those days. What mothers will go through. For there shall be great distress in the land and wrath upon this people. And they shall fall by the edge of the sword and shall be led away captive into all nations. And Jerusalem shall be trodden down of the Gentiles until the times of the Gentiles be fulfilled. And there shall be signs in the sun and in the moon and in the stars. Can you imagine seeing all these things in the heavenlies happening? And upon the earth distress of nations with perplexity, the sea and the waves roaring. Men's hearts failing them for fear and for looking after those things which are coming on the earth. For the powers of heaven shall be shaken. Right? So the powers of heaven, that can be seen in many different ways. It can talk about the physical, the actual uh, comets and, and everything that will happen upon this earth, the natural. But it also the spiritual, the powers will be shaken in heaven. Okay. So... In my next devotional, I will be talking about waxing strong in the spirit and actually what causes us, one of the things, great things, that will cause us to wax old in our spirit or weak in the spirit. Great devastation awaits all of mankind, such as never seen before, that will make the Holocaust look like a starter to the main meal. The suffering will be immense and many will not be able to bear it. Suicide will be the absolute norm of every day and families will turn on each other out of fear of what will happen to them. They will kill one another for a morsel of bread and eagerly long to become part of the bee system in order to survive. Our families that we've prayed for, right, um, that we've ministered to, will hard, not all, Obviously, Father will answer some of our prayers, but some of them will harden their hearts because of fear and they will turn against us and there will be like a vehement, bitter hatred against Christians and against Jews. And people say we are in the tribulation now. No, we're not. We will know that we know when we're in the tribulation. Fear will envelop the earth like a thick blanket so that the Antichrist will not only be um, welcomed, but he will be sought after. We will either wax weak or old in the spirit, or we will wax strong. Only the strong will survive. Let's go to Job 2, because this dream made me think of Job Verse 4, and Satan answered the Lord and said, Skin for skin, yea, all that a man hath will he give for his life. But put forth thine hand now and touch his bone and his flesh, and he will curse thee to thy face. And the Lord said unto Satan, Behold, he is in thy hand, but save his life. So went Satan forth from the presence of the Lord and smote Job with sore boils from the sole of his foot unto his crown. And he took him a potshed to scrape himself with all, and he sat down among the ashes. Then said his wife unto him, his wife, that's supposed to be his helper, says to him, Dost thou still remain thine integrity? Curse God and die. See how your family members will turn upon you? But he said unto her, Thou speakest as one of the foolish women speaketh. 
What? Shall we receive good at the hand of God, and shall we not receive evil? In all this did not Job sin with his lips. There was no guile on his lips. Verse 11. Now when Job's three friends heard of all this evil that has come upon him, they came every one from his own place, Eliphaz the Temanite, and Bildad the Shuhite, and Zophar the Naamathite. For they had made an appointment together to come to mourn with him and to comfort him. And when they lifted up their eyes afar off and knew him not, they lifted up their voice and wept, and they rent every one his mantle and sprinkled dust upon their heads towards heaven. And so they sat down with him upon the ground seven days and seven nights, and none spake a word unto him, for they saw that his grief was very great. Now, if we want a clear picture of what the great tribulation will look like, we only have to turn to the book of Job. Job was upright and a righteous servant. He was tested to the uttermost, and although he had moments where he wished he was never born, he still came out stronger through all of this. In the end, there was no guile on Job's lips. Job 42, from verse 1, Then Job answered the Lord, this is right at the end, the last chapter, and he said, I know that thou canst do everything, and that no thought can be withholden from thee. In other words, you know all our thoughts. Who is he that hideth counsel without knowledge? Therefore have I uttered that I understood not, things too wonderful for me, which I knew not. Year I beseech thee, and I will speak. I will demand of thee, and declare thou unto me. I have heard of thee by the hearing of the ear, but now my eye seeth thee. His eyes, his spiritual eyes have opened up. Wherefore I abhor myself and repent in dust and ashes. And it was so that after the Lord had spoken these words unto Job, the Lord said to Eliphaz the Temanite, My wrath is kindled against thee and against thy two friends, for ye have not spoken of me the thing that is right as my servant Job hath. So still Job's mouth, after everything that he's gone through, was found to be without guile. What does that tell you of Job's spirit? Therefore, take unto, remember in uh, Psalm 32, it said, Blessed is the man whose sins is forgiven, whose spirit there is no inic or no guile. In his spirit is there no guile. So his spirit is strong because there is no guile. Verse 8, Therefore take unto you now seven bullocks and seven rams, and go to my servant Job, and offer up for yourselves a burnt offering. And my servant Job shall pray for you, for him will I accept. Him will I accept, who is without blame before me. Lest I deal with you after your folly, in that you have not spoken of me the thing which is right, like my servant Job. Job received double, and his family returned to him, and they blessed him. And Proverbs 16, 7 tells us, When a man's way is right in the eyes of the Lord, he causes even his enemies to be at peace with him. So those enemies that have turned against us in the time to come, and there will be many, they will hate us and persecute us and want to kill us. God, and his, in his timing, know who those are that will turn again to us and they will bless us. Right? Just because we are workers does not mean we will be exempted from the coming devastation that will come upon this earth. Our eyes will see it. Much like a crashing wave, it will knock the very breath out of us. And how we rise from there will depend on whether our spirit is weak or strong. Yes, we will receive the outpouring of the Holy Spirit, but we are to be subject to the Spirit and have the character that will sustain the gifts and the calling, lest we think we stand. It is all a matter of dependence and walking and abiding in Him. And I want to end this with Psalm 73 from verse 14. David says, Here for all day long have I been plagued and chastened every morning. If I say I will speak thus, behold, I should offend against the generation of thy children. And when I thought to know this, it was too painful for me. 
until I went into the sanctuary of God. Then understood I their end. Surely thou dost set them in slippery places. Thou castest them down into destruction. How are they brought into desolation as in a moment they are utterly consumed with terrors? As a dream when thou one awaketh, so, O Lord, when thou awakest, thou shalt despise their image. Thus my heart was grieved, and I was pricked in my reins. So foolish was I, and ignorant, I was as a beast before you. Nevertheless, I am continually with thee, he is abiding. Thou hast holden me by thy right hand. Thou shalt guide me with thy counsel, and afterwards receive me to glory. Whom have I in heaven but thee? And there is none upon the earth I desire beside thee. My flesh and my heart faileth, but God is the strength of my heart and my portion forever. For lo, they that are far from thee shall perish. Thou hast destroyed all them that go whoring from thee. But it is good for me to draw near to God. I have put my trust in the Lord God, that I may declare all thy works. The time that we are going to go in is going to be waves that is so humongous and will really be so devastating. But we are to wax strong in the spirit. And the only way we do that is to ensure that there is no guile within our heart. That we will look and allow him to search our hearts so that we may be strong in the spirit, so that we may be fortified. You know, the Lord is our fortress. He makes us, he is our strong tower. We hide in him. But we hide only in him to the degree that we do not depend on ourselves. And the more you depend on him, uh, something Father said to me is, um, your strength is in direct proportion to your dependence upon me. And so it will be. Whether we trust in man, whether we trust in ourselves, whether we look to man or look to ourselves, or whether we truly look to him. And trust me, nothing, nothing can cause us to truly see where we are really at as it will be in during the tribulation. I always say it takes tribulation for the true church to stand up. May we be accounted of those that have been fortified because we've gone into the secret place, have bound the sacrifice to the horns of the altar and remained there for him to deal and cut away with the sword of the Spirit and sanctify us that we may be vessels filled with His glory, being able to manifest the truth in reality while standing in the midst of great darkness. Amen. Bless you.